limited testing of Counter-Strike 2 started more than two months ago, and since then the developers haven't released a single major update. At the same time, CSGO ending its life cycle on the highest note possible. And despite the lack of any new gameplay content, the game still managed to achieve a previously unseen online of 1.8 million concurrent players. And while things are pretty much fine on their own, developers decided to take a tactical break to gather momentum, complete all things related to the last major tournament, and only then slowly start to release content for Counter-Strike 2. Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and all visuals in this video are recorded in bootleg tools based on pieces of multiple Source 2 games like Dota 2, Half-Life Alex, or Apache Desk Job. And today I'm gonna show and tell you everything I haven't mentioned before, so let's get right into it. Get 5 free bucks for just trading your CSGO items on Skins Monkey. Simply select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range, and trade your old and rusty items to something more new and shiny. If you can't find something suitable for selected price, it will automatically add the leftover to your balance. Skins Monkey runs giveaways every day, week, and month. Just complete a few simple tasks and receive free skins. Here you can easily preview desired weapons and if you need any particular item, you can always use the advanced filters in the middle. If you want any trade locked items, you can simply use the reserve feature until they become available. Use code Gaben and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. One of the oldest things that continues to regularly appear and which has popped up again in CS2 are taunts. And it's not just a small mention in the code, it's almost ready to use first person and third person character animations. It's important to note that these animations are a mix of completely different types of taunts. Some, for example, are integrated into weapon fists or like hands from danger zone mode. So supposedly these first person tones can only be used there. But in the earliest version of CS2, when you force the game to drop the knife, it will automatically give you weapon fists. And after the community noticed this on Twitter, developers immediately cut it out this feature. But if we will take a look directly into the game code, we can prove that fists are in fact closely related to the first person tones. Apparently, the developers just spawn it for a short period of time while it plays the taunt animation and then instantly remove it. All of the other taunts are third person and work a little bit differently. You press a certain button, the camera switches from first person to third person, the character does some simple action like clapping or like saluting and then returns to its original position. It is important to note that all of these animations start and end while the character is holding an actual weapon in hand. So it certainly has nothing to do with the team introduction or end screen after or in the beginning of the match. Not to mention completely different namings in the animation sequences for taunts. In total, there are 10 of them. 3 for CT, 3 for T and 4 neutral ones. But it's not clear how and when they can be used. Most likely kinda similar to TF2, there are some threats, thumbs up, press F to pay respect and all sorts of stuff but without Fortnite dances. And if we will take a look at the leaked CSGO source code, we will find a couple of rather interesting comments from the developers about their own code. Quote, we always allow first person towns, but third person towns are more restricted. Need a weapon to taunt. Can't taunt while zoomed. Just hard code the team specific towns for now. Do a cool third person taunt if this weapon allows it. Obviously, that leak happened more than 6 years ago, but new taunt animations appeared only now and apparently the developers have not changed their mind. And I think we'll see something similar to tones from the co-op mode in Portal 2 or Team Fortress 2. What's interesting, in addition to tones, there are a huge number of new animations for the playable characters. For example, blocking punches with your fists. Previously you could only do a weak punch or a strong punch, but now apparently you can also block or counter attack your enemy. Also finally there are fully fledged swimming animations, because previously in CSGO instead of actually swimming your character seemed to just run through the water. And check out these new hostage animations, where instead of wacky and all progress in the interface, you'll see a fully animated process of how your character picks up a hostage on his shoulders. And to wrap it up, let's talk about tons of scripted or more like dramatically staged 
eye-catching player death animations. So the actors perform dozens of fall variations after being shot in all possible body parts to make it look as impactful as possible. A similar system is already used in Half-Life Alex, where the main part of enemy death animation is a pre-recorded sequence. And at a certain point in time, the game just switches it to Ragdoll, which helps to create this dramatic effect. But in theory, this may be related to the development of a mobile version of Counter-Strike 2. Because if the engine doesn't end up switching to Ragdolls and the bodies remain static, this will have a great impact on optimization. I'm not sure if you can use this as an argument, but the developers completely remove scroll wheel from the CS2 inventory interface. And you can literally move your items up and down just by pressing the left mouse button, so it looks like they're trying to adapt the controls for finger movements. But we are just getting started. My viewer William looked into the material system of Source 2 and suddenly discovered that there is a check to run a mobile version. And there is an option to switch graphics settings from personal computers to a configuration for phones. It is important to note that all this stuff is missing from all Source 2 games besides Dota and New CS, so it's definitely not intended for any other projects that came out before. Apparently versions for iOS and Android should use their own shaders based on Vulkan, which once again confirms the intentional steps towards proper optimization for mobile devices. And let's not forget this info from one of my recent videos. In addition, such a major change may be related to the future port of CS2 to mobile phones. About a year ago, there were rumors that developers were planning to make an iOS and Android version of the game. I've covered this many times in my videos, and in addition to the rumors, there were also actual strings that confirmed that info. These include mentions of new platforms and payment providers like Google Play and App Store. But more interestingly, the game info file for Counter-Strike 2 mentions configs for other platforms. And the only available option is connected with mobile devices. Apparently, while developing Counter-Strike 2, the developers decided to revisit some early ideas from the original game. Unless you don't know, in the earliest official CSGO concept arts, one of the options for cosmetic items was clothing. And in CS2 files, there was once again a mention of 6 slots for wearables. Similar character customization system has already been implemented in another official licensed game called Counter-Strike Online 2, which was developed under the hood of Valve and released in 2013 exclusively for Asian market. And since Valve is constantly reusing ideas from their old games, I would not be surprised if in the future we will see a full-fledged clothing system in CS2 as well. Just take a look. Here is original concept of the character. Here is a model that was added to the Asian version several years later. And here is CSGO's version that was added in one of the recent operations. And there are quite a few such examples. I think that developers will literally take the idea from Counter-Strike Online 2 and bring it to CS2, because it's not that hard to make a couple of agents customizable. And hats or other wearable parts don't have to be flashy or cringy. They can be done in mind with a team or specific agent. In addition to 6 slots for wearables, a new weird slot for pets was also mentioned again, and I've already touched this topic in my previous video. And then, in the files, there are some weird features like mentions of a pet capsule. At the moment, all pets have a placeholder image with a chicken. But potentially in future, we can expect a whole new cosmetic item. Whether it'll be companion skins or something completely else remains unclear. The only Valve game that has pets is Dota 2. But in 8 years, they've only added one little hedgehog that just follows the player. If we will take a deeper look into Counter-Strike 2 user interface, it becomes clear that pets already have their own inventory slots, on the same level as knives, gloves, graffitis, music kits or agents. But what exactly they will do still remains unknown. Cause if it'll be like a chicken following you everywhere, it can simply give out your current position. But maybe pets will be more like a weapon charms or like keychains or something like that, cause Pets sounds weird, uh, I don't know. 
By the way, recently I told you about a new anti-cheat model called Vak Life, which automatically stopped the match if one of the players was spotted cheating. And by modifying the engine libraries a little bit, you can visualize how it will look right in the game. If suddenly the anti-cheat notices that one of the players is a cheater, the match will be stopped, there will be a huge red banner cheater detected with the caption this match was cancelled by Vak Life. It's unclear how and when it'll be rolled out, but we can all agree that any movement towards improving the anti-cheat will be appreciated. And also, there is a new mysterious co-op game mode called Terror Hunt. We can already somewhat launch and try it ourselves, but keep in mind that it lacks the needed configs and maps. Basically, we have only console commands and a mention in a file with a list of all possible game modes under the category of co-op strike. But in a nutshell, based on all available info and my speculations, Terror Hunt is a replayable cooperative map where you, with your friends, move from point A to point B, clear waves of attacking enemies and progress deeper into location. You have a limited amount of time, but each time you destroy an enemy, it adds an extra 10 seconds. And by default, to win this co-op mission, you have to eliminate 20 opponents. While the overall concept sounds a little bit weird, like a training aim dungeon crawler map with a time limit and waves of enemies, it still might be fun to play with the friends. So leave a comment with banana emoji if you watched this far and check out my previous video where I talk about new matchmaking system in Counter-Strike 2. Until next time, увидимся!